what's going on everyone it is Chris and welcome to the first episode of Madden Maniac Previews how's everyone doing today uh, so if you have missed my latest video you would have seen that I uh, at least talked about what the series is going to be about but to do uh, the shortened version of it essentially I'm going to be uh, uh, doing a simulation of an NFL game between two of the 2018 teams, and I'm going to be talking about them. Uh, and this week, we're going to be doing the Browns and the Giants, so in the first half, I'll be talking mainly the Cleveland Browns, and in the second half, I'll be talking mainly the New York Giants, and uh, we're going to go through it. And essentially, the order that I determined for this was uh, 2018 record, so I'm going from the worst of the teams from last year to the best uh, and so, as you could assume, the last two teams that we'll be talking about will be the Eagles and the Patriots. That is not the case right now. We're going to be talking about the Browns and the Giants, two teams that are looking to turning around uh, from two abysmal seasons, uh, well, especially for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, this is, the, this is my second time attempting this video. I've already done a full entire episode with these two teams, so it's going to be repetitive uh, in a lot of ways for what I've already done for, uh, for myself, uh, but it'll be the first time that you guys hear my commentary, um, and, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about in the intro here, so why not we get started, uh, let's, yeah, let's go, spectate, I think, I think that's it, I'm already off to a good start, there you go, you're kind of like a sheet, no, I am good, uh, so, the way I wanted to do this was I want to do, uh, seven minute quarters, uh, regular exhibition play, simulation, nothing, no other big deal with that. Uh, even teams, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't want to have that on because I want to make it as accurate as possible. Uh, seven minutes, by the way, because it, I think it would be, it would just be ridiculous for me to sit th here for three hours plus talking about this stuff. It's like, it's like right now, as far as I'm concerned, this is already... It, the last, the first episode, the test episode I did, I think took like an hour almost. So I'm not gonna do force that on myself. Um, so I'm right clock on 20 seconds. Uh, we'll do, you know, we'll do a one o'clock start because that's probably where these teams would be playing. Uh, the Giants, and I'm gonna do uh, we get Overcast. I like Overcast. They actually made Overcast look. Like, remember that was like a plan of mine. I I don't know I. I feel like in past Madden series where they were uh, needed overcast, it was like you didn't really see a difference. <laughs> this one there's a clear difference. Uh, so yeah, and I think everything else is pretty much good at this point. All right, advance the game. Can I? I can just click on that, right? Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure. Uh, and so I'm gonna hold myself back from talking anything until the the game until each half kicks off. So, uh, but essentially. Uh, this should be fun. It should be fun overall. Um, and we're not gonna have... Last time, my problem was, uh, when I recorded the video, I was having commentators. Right? Like what you're hearing right now. Um, or I think you're hearing right now. Hold on. I have to put my earbuds in for a second. I hope you are hearing it. I don't think you are, actually. Cool. Never mind. <laughs> Um, that was one of the biggest issues with my the original video because it was just uh, and I don't mean nothing against uh, I, for, I forget what Brandon 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 Godden Brandon Godden I think his name is Brandon Godden and Charles Davis nothing against those guys but they drowned me out and that was not good for a video that's meant to be mainly commentary <laughs> not in any sense of the word um, I'm gonna actually go turn it down a little bit oh. Yeah, let's click off the video volume all together. There you go. Fixed it. Yeah, for some reason when I go into OBS, just completely shuts off the volume on a man, which I'm like, alright, whatever. Can't can't do much about. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move my mouse down here uh, in the meantime. Alright, so now we're underway. Welcome the Cleveland Browns to the twenty eighteen season. Let's talk about them. Um this is a really interesting season for the Browns, uh, and it's only been the second time in the history of the NFL that a team is going to be entering a season having not won a season since uh, two seasons before. 
uh, in uh, not won a game rather since two seasons before, um, and in, in the sense of zero and sixteen, no, the Detroit Lions of two thousand eight were the last team to do it, um, and they didn't have a good year the year after. So uh, you know the Browns are hoping to maybe hey let's go from zero and sixteen to potential playoff. I don't think they're looking at that right now. I think they'd be happy right now with a five and eleven, you know, six or ten season at this point, just to get back on the right track. Get to be like, hey, look, there's some development development here. You know, we're actually doing something and not just you know falling apart at the seams like it seemed like last year. So, what has this team done this off season? Well, a lot. Um, you had. The uh, one of the main things, of course, to talk about is uh, well, general manager, because near the end of last year, they got rid of Sashi Brown and added John Dorsey. John Dorsey has a history of success with uh, he built a very deep Chiefs team and it's helped them uh, to consecutive playoff appearances, turning around from a really rough 2012 season. Um, and you know that they since then he he has done very well by now of course he got fired at some point i don't know i, I forget what the ultimate reason was i think that uh, just generally they just wanted a change of mind they think that brett veach was you know the right guy regardless doesn't matter uh he's now with the browns and so what has he done thus far the quarterback is going to be the main focus <laughs> of this browns team and it has been the main focus of this browns team uh, for this whole offseason, like so what people are talking about. Um, and the, the, let's start with Tyrod or Tyrod Taylor. That's been the most annoying trend that I've seen is his fucking name, whatever, however you want to call him. I, My opinion, he is a very good quarterback. I will, I'm going to say it, very good quarterback. Because he controlled the ball. And he made the throws that he had to. He didn't throw t deep all the time, but he more than anything embraced the game manager role and did it. And he could run with run with the ball as well. He did what he could. I I just I really really think that Tyrod Taylor is a good quarterback. Um, and I don't I don't know if he was the main reason why the Bills made it to the postseason. I still even now don't even know how they did it uh but i'm sure he was a factor um and i think that's why i'm very happy for this browns team that they got him um that they that they got him as a as a starter for this year um i think he has a future as a starter somewhere else because yeah, unfortunately that's going to be the case for him he is going to have to start somewhere else probably next year uh maybe even mid-season this year uh, he might be traded. Who knows? I mean, especially if, if a team needs it. Um, and that's because the may, the number one overall pick was Baker Mayfield for the Browns. Uh, and it, his, for me, he was one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch at Oklahoma. N mainly because he had this escapability about him that any play that seemed like it was going to die, he just kept alive. You know, he could run the football, he could throw in tight spaces, he could do anything. And it was really awesome to, to watch. The biggest issue, obviously, with him was size and character, but I didn't really keep this team from drafting him. I don't think, ultimately, it's going it, to... He might not end up being the best quarterback to come out of this draft, but I do think that the, this team has a quarterback of the future in Baker Mayfield. With that said, am I a fan of the idea that they're gonna completely bench him for the first season? I'm not. I, I'm never really because if you if you have a quarterback that is is better than your starting quarterback, but you're just resting him to have him develop a little bit. On, on one way, I get it, but on the other hand, if you really want to win, especially with this coaching staff, because you know for a fact that this coaching staff, Hugh Jackson, we'll talk about it in a second with him, he is under a huge microsoft microsoft <laughs> a huge microscope and you can't 
you, you I, I just don't think that you can go into this year being like, all right, well, we're still developing, you know, we're still trying to, you know, figure this out, um, you know, and, and we'll just go from there. I mean, unless you really have the ownership's, you know, best interest at heart and the ownership trusts you and they know what you're doing and all that. That was a terrible kick. Jesus Christ. Um, I just don't trust it. Uh, I, I don't think that you can do that. And so, now it's, again, I, I, I just praised Tyron Taylor up, up and down. I think he has a great opportunity right now as a starter to do well with this team. But if you're talking about winning now, I think the Browns with Baker Mayfield could do better right now than Tyron Taylor with the Browns. Now, again, that's their decision, and I think it is good for a quarterback to develop for whatever, however long it takes, half a year, full year, whatever. I just think that you have to consider the position that you are currently in, Hugh Jackson. Um, which I guess we could just go ahead and talk about him because this is guy is one in thirty-one. He has one win in two seasons. Any other coach in any other franchise would be fired by now. If Bill fucking Belichick went two seasons at 0 and 16 and 115, which would never happen, which 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 would be the even more shocking part about it. I don't know if Robert Kraft would be completely happy and want it, like definitely maybe he would have security, but the line would be fucking thin. <laughs> it would be thin and I feel like that should be the Browns right now. Their patience should be thin with the head coach right now. And he I would I mean he was considered a very good head coaching candidate when that time when the time came in, in 2016 for him to be hired and right now though just because he had like a decent year with the raiders that one year a few years ago i think that's why many people were like hey this guy could actually do something but you really think about it that is a small fucking sample size to for a head coach and considering where this team is at right now i just uh, i don't trust him i don't trust him as a coach i don't trust him going forward even with the talent that he has how bad do you have to be to have gone one in 31 regardless of the roster that you have i know it was depleted i know it was bad but one in 31 has to be on the coach it, it has to be because good coaches would figure out what how to use their talent he, and he did not know how to use his talent, and that's what's got him in the position that he's in. And that's the unfortunate part of this whole thing. So, and it, what's inc also incredible was that the biggest issue with this team was the offense uh, last year. Because the defense, especially near the end of the year, was doing well. And again, we'll talk about the specifics of that in a second. And, and Hugh Jackson is supposed to be this quarterback guru. He's supposed to be this offensive champion. And he and he has failed. And it, it reminds me so much of Ben McAdoo, but like times 10. As someone who follows the Giants and is a Giants fan, you know, I know how ridiculous it is from an offensive coach to fail on the offensive side of the ball. Um, after finding success in the past, I guess because he was like, "Oh, well, I have to balance both. The, I have to balance all the team, all the players now." Uh, but you, you would still think that would be the more competent unit. You would think it would be the defense that would struggle. No, it's it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> that to me, it's all absurd. I look. You look at Hard Knocks, and that that's been a big storyline for this team too. The fact that they've been on this HBO special, which I which I love. I watch. I I hope people watch it because it's really cool. But you get a look at Hugh Jackson, and you've seen multiple times where you had Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, questioning him, and Hugh Jackson just basically be like, "I'm the boss. I I this is my team. I'm gonna do what I I, I do because I'm gonna let my players rest because I say this. I say so. I don't care what you say." Which I'm like, don't you want to have some, co like, corroboration? Like, don't you want to talk to these guys? 
I, like I, I'm not really sure what the whole point that he's trying to make there. It's kind of strange. Um, and then like when Corey Coleman walks into the room and he's like, "Why am I on the second team? Why am I on the second team?" And instead of just wanting to like just kind of address it, kind of talk about it, and it may have been in the editing, but he was just like, "Go talk to Haley." As if it's, like, not his problem. Even though it is, because he's in charge of the fucking team. It's weird. I There is just weird moments with him. And I have absolute, like, sympathy for him. And he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Um, you know, and you, you feel bad because of the fact that, that his mother and his brother died in the span of, like, two weeks. And it was insane. That like, you, you feel so terribly because no one should ever have to go through that and to, to through those deaths at all and to have have it happen over the span of two weeks is just it's incredibly sad but in terms of football and in terms of the head coach i just do not trust hugh jackson and no one should no one and maybe maybe he'll prove us wrong this year and i and i hope that's the case I, if he can make, if he can really turn this this unit around, and he could be like, look, this is this is what I was brought here to do. I'm finally doing it. Then, I'm sure all of us who criticize Hugh Jackson will raise our hands and be like, well, I guess we were wrong. Or people will just be like, well, no, that's just because of the extra talent. You're still a bad coach. You know, whatever. People people are critics. Um, so oh, I just want to make sure I still still hear it. Um, so. Moving off the head coach now, uh, you know, and speaking of Todd Haley, he's coming up from the Steelers, uh, and that unit has been fire <laughs> for for quite a few seasons, and it's been, it's been a fun unit to watch. So now you're looking at a team that could potentially do well, um, but the biggest issue with this team right now uh, is their in terms of the offense is their running game and their offensive line. They don't have a clear starter on offense right now. They have Duke Johnson, who I think is a very underrated, very fun player to watch. He is, and he's, of course, perfect timing. I think that's him on the screen right there. There you go. Um, with Duke Johnson, he is your dynamic player that you could, that you need to come out of the backfield and to line up as a wide receiver and he can do a lot but in terms of like a powerhouse running back with Hyde and Chubb I they're not a good unit right now they need to get better and part of that is because the offensive line has gone down unfortunately from last year and, and that's the sole reason for that is Joe Thomas it's sad you know you, you miss you had this Hall of Fame guy go out because his because he gets injured with his neck and obviously you do have I, I don't blame him at all for, for retiring at that point because that is a scary injury to have but he goes out on a on a team that's won one game in two seasons that's so sad for a Hall of Fame guy and now you have a unit that is just not as complete as it used to be and you don't I don't know if you have a clear leader on that that offensive line unit right now um and you have a few guys that have been impressive in the past Kevin Zeitler JC Treader and all that but you you don't have a clear left tackle right now that's kind of some debate you do have a nice talent in Austin Corbett playing at left guard right now but the problem is is that you have a a you just have a hole in that hole. You have a hole in the heart in that, <laughs> that used to be a very difficult Browns offensive line, be, mainly because of Joe Thomas, and now things are going to get rough for your running game. It's going to be tough to protect the quarterback, and it may lead to more injuries and more just heartache on that offense. But the highlight of this team, of this offense, I know in the other quarterbacks, I was just praising both of them, but the true talent is that wide receiver. The start, of course, the storyline has been that Josh Gordon was supposed to be here, and he isn't. Again, well, he's there on the screen, but he is not at training camp right now, and he is not, uh, in, I guess, because he is still uh, in rehab and all that. And first of all, 
Um, I mean, I does I guess this should go without saying, but people are still like Durin and assholes. You can't blame him for his addiction. You can't. You can we can attack someone all they want about what they are going through, um, and he's been having an addiction to alcohol that has kept him off of the field for many years. And I know that we want to attack him and we want to be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" But the truth of the matter is, you can't do that to someone that is that has an addiction. Um, I do deep down think that he is a good guy, and that I I think that he should take all the time that he needs to rehab. So I'm not necessarily like worried for his sake that he's out of training camp because if that is keeping him away from alcohol and keeping him training, if that's his way of doing it, that's that that's good. I hope that he comes back because he's a great talent and he whenever he is on the field for the Browns, he's the best offensive player there. Um, and with Jarvis Landry coming over from Miami, he was traded there. Um, no, with, with him coming there with a young talent but also problematic talent, uh, a problematic talent in Antonio Callaway as well. You know, you have a group that could do so many great things um but they have to stay on the field um and i think landry should stay on the field he has some of the best hands in the nfl he is i think he he has a record i think he has like the most receptions i think in his first few years i don't know if that's certain i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that that's 100 percent correct but he is a really good uh slot receiver and i think they're gonna be trying him more out wide uh, more often, I don't think he's going to do bad either. I, I, he played really well. Another guy who played well, who will be flying under the radar a little bit, is Rashad Higgins. When I when I went to the Browns Giants game preseason game, he played very well um, in, in like in the few se series that he played in. So that's someone to keep an eye on as well. Um, and Antonio Cal Callaway, I think, is just going to be a really fast, fast player. Um, to deal with as well I, I i think that you have a really good unit there they just need to stay on the field um and that's going to be a huge relief off the quarterback just the problem is going to be what's happening up front um so we'll see how that all ends up playing out for the browns i i think that overall do i think the over offense has improved yes but you do still have the holes that you do and uh you know, I, offensive line, it's hard for me to really analyze as well as other positions, but, it, you know, that I can tell just by the way that the, the games have played thus far um, and how the running game has been thus far that it's just, you know, I, I, I don't love what I see. But again, it's preseason. Those things improve as time goes on. You can't really, you can't really make a solid thing. Also, should also bring up the fact uh, before, um, before this quarter ends, uh, that Dez Bryant has been in the talks to be signed by Cleveland. Um, but as of this recording on Friday, he has not been signed. Uh, come Monday, hopefully he will be. <laughs> it's, uh, it, hopefully he will be, and it's that way this video becomes slightly irrelevant. <laughs> no, no, I look. It would be fun to see him in Cleveland. I'm I'm rooting for that to for him to actually get there. Um, we don't know for sure if that's ever going to happen. Um, and I, he, I mean, you have to think like what team, what other team is going to be signing him if anyone's going to have him in, in training camp right now? Um, look, he's he's clearly he clearly thinks that he deserves another shot, and he thinks a lot of his problems has been because of the the poor uh the poor management i guess of the offense in dallas i mean i don't know i i just think he's had a drop off <laughs> I just that's that's just you know i don't think that he has been performing very well um and i think part of it is his own fault uh but you know what if he feels like he's gonna do well in another system then you know maybe he has a chance to prove it but the fact that the the browns have turned him was have kind of turned him away or just haven't had a deal yet i i very much would be curious as to what is happening there um and what what's gonna what the future of him is but if he could play the way he used to play a few years ago 
um, as a tall, just unbeat, unblockable, um, unbeatable opponent, because he really was for a, a good stretch of time. I I really think you that's that would make the Browns wide receiver unit one of the best in the NFL. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's going to happen. And he I don't we don't even know for sure if he's going to be at that talent level uh, at this point. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to try to quickly go through this defense. Miles Garrett, Emmanuel Agba are the two stars on the defensive line. The main concern right now is who's going to be starting at defensive tackle. We don't know for sure. There's kind of there's some depth issues there. But right now, the two guys on the ends are going to make a life of a living hell for offensive linemen. I think especially, of course, the number one overall pick, Miles Garrett. Uh, and the linebacking core is excellent as well. you got Christian Kirksey, got Joe Scorbitt, who was the only pro bowler on that team last year. Uh, and, of course, Jimmy Collins, uh, the former Patriot. They, those three had a great year, and, and they're going to have a second year. Uh, or I think it would it be this third year together now. It might be. I, I think I think it might be their second. Um, if all three of them play at their best, that is a tough unit to play against, and it, and it showed again. This Browns unit, this whole defense, ha was better than than their record showed. Um, a lot of the problems of their 0-16 season was on their offense. So this unit did not get any worse for sure, and that points me in the direction of the secondary. That unit was not the best. <laughs> that was not as good as the other parts of it. Um, although they, I think Jason McCourty played well, but they sent him away for some reason. I, he may not even make the team though in, in New England. So who knows? <laughs> who knows what's happening on that front? But they draft Denzel Ward, the and that he's the highest drafted defensive player in the draft, and many people think he's the best corner of the draft, and it was people were very happy. We're very, we're very high on him, not very happy. I'm sure that many people were happy that he was drafted. Um, and you have a guy in Demarius Randall who was traded for, from Green Bay who was playing cornerback for a while but now is returning to his original position at safety. So he might be a little bit more comfortable in that position. Jabril Peppers is also there uh, at safety. He was so much fun to watch in Michigan, but he's had struggles going in. He he struggled in his first year, so maybe he makes the leap. He's been there. He's been the main kick returner for the team. So, I, I in special teams, he's been he, he has he, he's had to focus on that as well as playing uh, safety. So, uh, we'll see how he all adjusts. I I I'm, I don't really have a great evaluation of him because he, uh, as far as I know, this last past season was not that great for him he needs to improve greatly uh for this upcoming year and then you have uh terrence mitchell who is a cornerback from the kansas city he wasn't amazing for kansas city but he got the job done and i think that's a formidable veteran to have opposite of denzel ward um so that's a, that secondary has i think greatly improved from last year um with a, that with a unit that had a lot of holes um, it, considering the defense as, as a whole was very good, um, so I and Greg Williams, I mean, look, I don't like the guy. No one likes the guy. I mean, he's he's an asshole, and he probably shouldn't even be coaching in the league. But unfortunately, he, that he is, and we have to talk about him. His this guy has clearly put his personality in this defense is clearly going to be aggressive and uh, annoying for offenses to deal with and i do think that if the browns have any shot this year of being a competitive team it's going to be their defense and i guess their wide receiver core on the offense and, and hey the quarterback i mean i mean we'll throw all those bones at them so i i think as the 42 seconds left on this quarter um i think to really sum it all up for this Cleveland team, they have so much to look forward to. Um, I think, regardless of what the future of Hugh Jackson is, I hope that whoever is the next head coach, because I mean, let's face it, you're probably gonna have another head coach next year, uh, barring a just miraculous season out of the Browns. Um, you have to hope that the owner picks someone that's going to use this talent to its best capability unlike you know you know Hugh Jackson who's just going to be like I'm going to do it this way 
and just hope that everyone adjusts because that's what it kind of seems like. I am hoping that this team does well, does better than they have been, but I hope it's enough, or, but I hope it's not as so much where the Browns are like, let's do another year of Hugh Jackson because I'm like, I don't know. But, but that's, of course, barring the fact that maybe Hugh Jackson does turn around and does become a great coach this year. Will, will it happen? Again, I'm hoping. I'm not, I'm not rooting against any of these guys. I'm just... Right now, what we've seen, it's been shit. <laughs> it really has. So that's my point of view on that. Um, and let's see if this goddamn score can go up at all, please. For the love of God, can we can we can we have anything any touchdowns at all? I this is what happened in the last recording. The Giants and the Browns play the worst fucking games because <laughs> it's just they're, they're not good units, and so they're they're just awful. Fucking Barkley had three rushes and negative five yards. Jesus. Uh, one more note on the Browns, and I thought this was fascinating. Um, well, I, well, first of all, I think. Hard Knocks has been excellent this year. It's been one of my favorites. And I, I think part of that's just because I think it's the way that Hard Knocks has, has handled it. But I do think it has a lot to do with the team being such an underdog and having such fascinating personalities behind it. There's so much to like uh, about the Browns. And I, I, I'm i hoping this Hard Knocks team is one of them that you're gonna you can you're gonna root for them and they'll end up kind of satisfying you because last year with the bucks oh boy was that a disappointment the last two years with the rams and the bucks have been utter face plants for for us to watch on hard knocks i'm really hoping the browns turn that around the last time I, texans went to the playoffs in, in in their 2015 i think i'm pretty sure it was the 2015 season so, I don't know. Maybe the Browns can turn around. I'm telling you, the Browns make the playoffs like shit's hitting the fucking fan, and I'm, that's not even a Browns joke. Like I it literally, the Browns are hitting the fan, and it's like everything's gonna go insane because how does that happen? It's gonna. It would be incredible. I think it would be really great because I think the Browns fan base deserves it. They did. I. They genuinely do. Um. And they deserve their first fucking win. There's a they have cases all around the fucking city in Cleveland that are locked until the Browns get their first win and it's free beers for everyone. Give those people beers, man. <laughs> they've needed it since they've started the losing streak. Let's give it to them. Let's 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 award them. You know, week one, Steelers, let's go. <laughs> That's not happening. But um I, I just, I really, I mean, oh, I, I say it's not happening. God knows what, what will happen um, with that team. Uh, but here's hoping for the Browns, man. I, I'm, I will be rooting for them as a Team Chaos fan. All right. As we close out of this uh, kind of abysmal start of this game, <laughs> we are close out the first half. Um, yeah, so the... I, I think with the the Browns and Giants, who is more likely to make the playoffs between these two? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to ask myself this question every halftime. Who do I think is more likely to make the playoffs? I guess the team that made the playoffs the latest, I guess, would be the Giants. But I don't know, man. There's there's problems I have with the Giants as well that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. But I I don't know. It's going to have to take incredible quarterback play from either of these teams. Um, and I think the... Or, or, it, it, maybe not necessarily. The, with the Browns, definitely the defense. If the defense can dominate, it won't really matter if they just have a few good offensive uh, uh, like options on there. If the defense can just kick ass, you can have a team like the, you know, the Broncos or whatever from last... From 2015, or you know, that, that could end up you know being decent enough to make the playoffs. Not Super Bowl. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go Super Bowl compared to a Super Bowl team. But you know, it would be decent enough to make the playoffs. You know, Giants. God, I don't know. It's tough. Let's talk about them because it has kicked off. Um, 
so here's the thing with the Giants. They uh, cleared house uh, late in 2017. They got rid of Ben McAdoo, and they got rid of longtime general manager Jerry Reese. Uh, that was general, the general manager firing was a long time in the coming. Uh, many people, including myself, have thought that he's Jerry Reese was kind of capped along for a little too long. I think that was just because his loyalty to the Maras, and there's a lot of people that loved him there. Um, and I mean, he was general manager for for the Super Bowls, so I mean, I guess it's like, oh well, he's a Super Bowl winning general manager, so we gotta keep him. But I, you know, I think part of that was because of Ernie Acosi. But you know, then he Darius did have some good draft picks. I, but it, you know, what? I'm just glad that they changed it. We just needed a change. Would I say I was thrilled with the change? No, I I was a little underwhelmed overall. But I'm hoping to be proven wrong. The first thing they do is bring in general manager Dave Gellman, Dave Gellman, who uh, was with Carolina, uh, and he was the one to help build the 2015 Super Bowl team or the the NFC Championship team, I guess you'd call him. Um, and that was, that was just an incredible fucking team. Um, and so, you know, if he could build this team up to that and have us actually win the Super Bowl, that would be pretty nice. And he loves the Giants because he's been in the Giants organization in the past. So, like, maybe he, you know, I, I'm not saying he's going to work extra hard now, but it's going to, I feel like it's going to be a factor the fact that, like, you know, now that this is, this is my home team. I, this is, I really... You know, I really want these guys to be like super successful, and let's let's just go out there and let's fucking let, let's just rebuild this team all the way up. But at the same time, I felt like he's kind of an old school general manager, um, and I really wanted someone that was kind of like new age thinking. You know, maybe Lewis Reddick from ESPN. I mean, he's he's shown that he could be he's very very smart, and I think that he could have been a huge part. Uh, a, a great addition for our team, but you know, whatever. It, they they kind of kept to a Giants loyal list. I, I just wanted the Giants to think outside the box. Picking Dave Gellman was picking someone who's basically already been part of the Giants franchise, and that's what was just kind of frustrating. But again, maybe he'll prove us wrong. Maybe he'll build this team and be like make it incredible. You know, again, we never know. Um, then you have the hiring of the head coach and Pat Shermer. Um, I was originally like, please get us, like, Josh McDaniels, because Patriots, you need everyone from the Patriots to join these other fucking teams to get their ass in line. Um, of course, we know what happened with that, um, and, I mean, we'll talk about that when the Colts have come up, but, yeah, that didn't work out for the Colts um, in, a, in a span of, like, 48, 72 hours. Um, but, none, nonetheless, they chose Pat Shermer overall, and it, I think... One of the things that I, I'm, I'm recording this on the night that they're doing the preseason games, and someone pointed out that what's different between Pat Shermer and Ben McAdoo is that he's a lot closer with the players. Uh, he he get, he wants the players to he wants to have a good relationship with them. It's not just all business, um, and he's you know he's not like Ben McAdoo who would hide behind a you know a you know a play sheet you know, and I, I and I'm like. That does sound good, and I love it. And it, 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 but again, I also I I just wanted someone that was younger. I wanted someone that had new ideas, because I think that's where the NFL is going. And you want to you kind of just want to make your way there. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Um, regardless, um, he was the man that helped the Vikings make the NFC Championship game last year, or he was one of the main factors. Because he helped make Case Keenum uh, a very competent quarterback uh, for that team, uh, a very fun quarterback to watch, a fun offense to watch overall, uh, even without Dalvin Cook for most of the year. Um, so that was impressive, and and so maybe he'll do it. <laughs> maybe he will. He'll he'll help this offense that has been such a drag to watch for the past few seasons just get back to doing good. <laughs> maybe. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, but he, his first stint with the Browns didn't work out well. Um, and so I, I'm just hoping that he can ha he can turn things around and things can be, uh, can work itself out on that front. Um, regardless, enough with the head coach. You know, both him and Dave Gellman, you know, as much as they're, they're maybe more old school thinkers, I think 
I think Pat Shermer though will bring new ideas to the table, um, and could make it make things like a little like, you know, throw some interesting things in there, uh, to make the offense a little bit more spicy. Who knows? Uh, now, he, here's my breakdown of the, of the roster right now, and the focus right now is on Saquon Barkley. I'm and I can't really speak too much to him right now. He seems like he's going to be an amazing addition to that team. And I'm hoping that it works out for him. Um, because if it doesn't, then we're fucked. Because <laughs> uh, then that's... In that, we, we needed, we've needed a running back for so long since like Ahmad Bradshaw. Or even, like I guess, Tiki Barber, for crying out loud. You know, it's, it's been so long. Uh, Eli Apple with interception. We'll talk about him in a second. Um... It's been so long since we've had uh, a a team uh, a team running back that we can get behind that he can actually get through the holes, get through the tackles, break tackles, and just run down the field like big time. And even also have that element of just being sneaky at the same time. Like he can be like a bull rush, and he can be the sneaky running back. Like he seems like he has everything that you want in a running back, and so. I really want him to be successful. It would be amazing. With that being said, um, I think the problem with the Giants right now is the quarterback. I'm sorry, Eli. And the offensive line. Let's talk about Eli. Because I think that many people love Eli in New York. I was also among those that felt like it was kind of bullshit that he got benched. Not so much the benching... But the fact, I think the timing of it was weird. Um, I think the way they went about it was weird. Because it was almost condescending. Hey, we'll put you in so that way you could keep your start streak. And then you could go on the bench and we'll have someone else in. It's kind of like insulting at that point. Because I don't know how much Eli really gives a shit about that. But he was just like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stay on the bench, you know. You have your fun with, with the rookie quarterbacks that's the guy who you're supposed to develop right no let's start geno fucking smith i to me to this day that was one of the most frustrating elements of of last season you know like the year before it was it was the the boat trip last year it was fucking geno smith starting at quarterback because yeah let's just take a look at him yeah sure I, it, it just felt like there was some weird motives there because they were like oh let's you know i i know how we can do things let's start gino instead of like starting web i mean i get it maybe davis webb was not ready but how is gino smith gonna change fucking anything he has not been good for a while and we know that and so but the thing is though if it happened earlier in the season they benched eli sooner then I would have gotten it. I just felt like it was too little too late at that point. If they were really looking to evaluate talent, they would look at their rookie, not a guy that failed <laughs> with the Jets, you know? I So, Eli, I just don't... I feel like he's not been a great quarterback in the past few seasons. He's, he's constantly overthrowing guys. Uh, or, you know, or more so, I think he's under, like, underthrowing it, like, hitting guys in the feet. But, bottom line, he's not accurate. He's not the accurate quarterback that, if he ever was, you know. And that's my biggest issue with this team, or with, with, with Eli right now. And that's what I'm worried about in terms of his quarterback. Like, ooh, is that a sneak punt? Well, there, well, all right. That was interesting. All right. Well, Hey, maybe that's the spicy play that the match is going to bring. Anyways, um, so I I just didn't realize that the fucking uh, the, that the computers could run such special plays like that. Um, but yeah, I I just and I'm not meaning to shit on Eli relentlessly, but he just has not been an amazing quarterback. In, in, a, in a few years. I think his last good season was in 2015. That was a bad year for the Giants, but that wasn't a terrible year for him. And that was under Ben McAdoo, and then the year after, he took over as head coach and it completely, you know, sent the team to the playoffs and then completely burnt the place to the ground. So it's, you know, whatever. The circle of life. Um, so Eli Manning, 
I think has a few more years in him of starting quarterback, but he needs to prove that he can remain there and help us win games. Pat Shermer is a good start. He could be a huge factor in getting Eli ready uh, and being and hit, getting his you know getting his mechanics back together. Um, I but I just I don't know. I I don't know for sure if that's gonna happen. And if it doesn't, what's gonna be the issue? What what will the Giants do next year? Because I think you gotta consider taking a quarterback a little bit sooner. I know they took Kyle Lalletta. Maybe he is the future. But if you don't have any faith of any of the quarterbacks on your roster right now, uh, after this season, you gotta take one in the first round. You have to. So it. it in, in the, it's really a shame because I feel like Eli is surrounded by talent. Not only do you have Saquon, but you got old, a little backup junior who, as much as he pisses me off sometimes with his on-field stuff, and even I guess the off-field stuff with the boat trip, I don't know. That, that I, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> that, I, that pissed me off because of everyone else's reactions, but I kind of understand the fact that everyone else's reactions kind of helped maybe fuel get, get it got to their heads and maybe that affected the playoff game. Whatever. Regardless, his on-field tactics are why I really get upset about because it's he gets really upset and then throw wants to throw punches or try to knock people out and shit like that. And that just it causes us gives us penalties and it just it becomes it's an utter meltdown. And we just can't have that for the team. He's passionate, but the passion needs to be controlled in some ways. You gotta channel it in better ways than how he has in the past. But he is an amazing athlete. He is one of the best wide receivers in the league. And I think that if he could stay focused, he could be amazing. So you have him, you have Saquon Barkley, and I think and you have Evan Ingram who I loved. He was the only good offensive part of last year. He really was. He was just he was fun because he was both a blocking tight end, but he also got down the field, and he he was a huge target for them down down the line. And I I think that you have three guys that are going to be a three headed monster that are going to just kick ass if you have the right guy throwing the ball to them, and if the ball can get to them, and I think it, it can because well, I, I, specifically with with Beckham and Ingram because. You guys, you have uh, you have a guy right now in Eli who's having trouble with that th throwing the accuracy. But those two guys, I feel like you you just you could rely more on them than on yourself. But I just have to hope that Eli can get, at least get the ball in the vicinity, so then Odell and Evan Ingram can do their you know theatrics. Um, there's also Sterling Shepard, who I'm not high on, but you know hopefully he could hopefully you know he was a star in Oklahoma. You know, maybe he can have the, a breakout year uh, and do really well. He wasn't that guy for us last year. I know he was injured sometimes, but he just wasn't. I, maybe that was it. He was just not 100% healthy. But if he can do well for us this year and he can get to that, that talent level that he was, I think that that's going to be a big deal um, for him uh, moving forward um, for, for the team uh, in terms of their offense. But then there's the offensive line. Which I've talked about already that I'm not the brightest of the offensive line, but I know when I see it, a bad offensive line. And they did add Nate Soldier, who is a veteran, been with the Patriots, very reliable. You have Will Hernandez, again, very reliable. You know, you you you, you like him a lot in terms of his personality, but also the fact that he's a big guy who can just completely obliterate uh, defensive linemen. The problem stems it comes to the other three guys on the line. I did not like the fact they got rid of Western Bridgeburg and Justin Pugh. I thought those guys were, were really good offensive linemen that have been with the team for a little bit, and they they were really the core and what kept that line from not completely being a disaster. Because you know who made it the complete disaster? Eric Flowers, who is still on the team. He is on the right tackle now. He is the starting right tackle, which I don't even know if that's going to do anything. Because if you can't fucking block, what's one side going to do for the other? I think it makes, the logic makes no fucking sense to me. But okay, let's just go with it. So he's now on the right tackle, and you have these guys that are you're not really known uh, that haven't really done a ton for the, the the team yet at center and at right guard, so it's like, 
okay. So, it's it's the difference of maybe Eli could rely on his blind side uh, being protected, but maybe not so much what's in front of his face, which could be good. Maybe if Eli could run, that could help. I, I went to practice one time. I saw Eli Manning run in, in uh, for this in this year of practice, of course. I saw him run the ball. You know, he, he escaped the pockets and all that. Uh, but that was in practice. What's going to happen in the game? Can we really rely on Eli's legs? Can we rely on him to escape the pocket, throw the ball, and complete it? I don't know. Um, and so that's my biggest concern right now with the offensive line. What the fuck is going to happen on the right? I don't know. It's going to be an adventure. Um, <laughs> so all that being said, um, I then turn my attention to the defensive part and um, a team that... Oh, I, I'm not high on the Giants defense either, and, and that's a shame because that was a unit I felt really strong about going into last year, uh, and that fell apart. But here's what we have. You have Damon Harrison right now as your defensive tackle, the guy that's kind of holding down, uh, I guess you could say the whole front seven, like the guy that you can rely on uh, the most to stuff the run, um, you know, and maybe get after the quarterback as well. So, yes, that's good. But then you have two defensive ends who don't have a ton of experiences. And Dalvin Thomason, B.J. Goodson, uh, or B.J. Hill, I'm sorry. You got you have those guys that are, don't have a ton of experience. I think one's a rookie and the other is a two-year player. I don't know how much I can rely on those guys right now and how much they're going to end up being, you know, that they're going to end up being these amazing players for us. I, it, to me, that's just still a huge question mark. Uh, and they got rid of Jason Peter Paul, which I got it. I, I get because it, it was, you know, you had to get some contract room in. You know, you, you had to save some room there. And that's fine. I mean, I, I love Jason Peter Paul. I loved him as a player. I loved what he did. I think the Bucks got a steal. We will talk more about that when the Bucks come up. But that player was the best defensive player lineman and we traded him and we kept Olivia Vernon who also had a kind of a state contract and he's now at linebacker um I believe that this is the first year with him at linebacker I'm not too sure um oh are we gonna get our first touchdown for crying out loud please I don't even care if it's the Browns thank you thank god we needed a big play good good for Carlos Hyde anyways um I, I think about Olivia Vernon, who he he was a nice addition uh, in 2016, but he hasn't really played amazing. You know, he's been good, but he hasn't been amazing. And I hope that he can that he can be like he can have a, a good season at, at linebacker. Uh, I just don't know if that's a position that he's very familiar with. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but then you have the rest of the linebacking core. You have Alec Ogletree, who I like. I like the fact that they traded for him. I thought he's he's been good with the Rams, but the problem with him is that he's he struggles in coverage. And as a linebacker, you gotta do a little bit of everything. You gotta go after, you have to rush the passer, you have to try to tackle the running back, or or you gotta try to cover the wide receivers and the tight ends. You gotta do a little bit of everything so you're you're in the middle of the defense. And he he can't do one of those things. He or at least he's been struggling with that. He's struggled with that since he's been with the Rams. So that's my big concern with him. Uh, I do love the additions of Lorenzo Carter, uh, the, or the addition of Lorenzo Carter. I think he was so much fun to watch in Georgia with Roquan Smith by his side. That's going to be a huge, I hope he's going to be a huge factor down the line. I don't know if he's going to be an impact player immediately, but I think that's going to be a steal for the Giants defense. I, again, I, it's up to them whether or not he, he starts, but he, I think... I think he's backing up. I think uh, I think he's backing up Olivia Vernon right now. Again, I I just I feel like Lorenzo Carter is much more of uh, I, I think he's much more of a better player um, right now. Or, or or he I think he could get to that point where he's a better player than Vernon. But again, th this team has dra has at least put their trust in Vernon that he's going to do well. So you know we'll, we'll see how it goes. Y you also have. Um, you also have B.J. Goodson, there he is, for linebacker. 
uh, starting right now. Curry Martin with from Arizona, who he had he's he's been like a you know he's been a veteran you know he has experience, but I don't know if I completely trust him. You also have some depth with Carter Barwin and Mark Herslich, who's been the longest tenured defensive player there, but that linebacking court needs to find a fix because it has not been good for quite a few years now. They need to make sure that this is the unit that works, and I think it's going to help them if they, uh, like, like put Lorenzo Carter at the first team at some point. You know, put him as a starter, please. Because <laughs> really, I'm really high on him. Um, just his ability to just cause havoc. I really, I think I very much uh, am high on him. Um, and then you have the secondary, which... Again, was the you know the NYPD like the 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 really strong unit that was um, well it is no longer but you do have the return of Landon Collins who is the only Pro Bowler on this team last year and I love Landon Collins he is always going to be a great player as long as he's still with this team I'm hoping he doesn't catch the injury bug this year because we need him in that secondary uh, and Norris Jenkins he had a down year last year but. Let's hope that he turns it around as well. Um, and But the biggest, I think the biggest storyline overall is going to be uh, Eli Apple. Because this guy was was this immature kid, essentially, who he got drafted and he just, he was not prepared for, for, for to be a pro, apparently. Um, you know, the, the, this was not, he was not considered to be a very, um, like, a, a very experienced guy, a guy ready to be at a pro level and be able to have that work ethic and be, you know, to, to be able to handle it all. Um, and it's rubbed, it rubbed the last Giants locker room the wrong way. Um, and they've had to learn, I guess, uh, from, or he's had to learn from his mistakes, uh, and has to learn to grow up. Um, and... Dave Gettleman on his first one of his first days as general manager was like, "I want to give uh, Eli Apple a chance. I want to be I want to be able to give him a blank slate, and you know go from there and and see what happens. Um, you know, I, he has a blank slate with me, so I I, I don't know how it's going to work out because I, I feel like I've barely seen how this kid go has has played." And when I've seen him, he hasn't done well. Um, but apparently, it's been such a blank slate that he is now slotted to be the starting cornerback. So what gives? <laughs> so what's changed? I'm very curious to see how Pat Shermer, Dave Gellman, and just the leadership in that Giants locker room, the players, and just generally the leadership of that team has talk has dealt with Eli Apple has talked to him and let's see what he does this year let's see if he can actually prove because I don't if he hasn't and he's clearly still not where he should be um he's gonna be cut probably but it's a new year and we'll see how it goes so that that I'm fascinated to see how that um top to bottom how that ends up playing out uh, for the Giants, if that ends up working out for them uh, in the uh, in, in the in the secondary, um, I guess that yeah, I'm I'm already kind of done with talking about the Giants, but there, there there's just so much with this team that I I worry about though because like I said, you have you have holes on both sides still. Everyone's like, oh well, the Giants they're just gonna be right back to their 2016 form. Oh for sure. And like I, I, I mean, the argument could be like, oh well, not I don't, I don't agree with that because you know, it, you know, you all have a first year head coach, first year general manager. Like, don't you think they have need a few years? But then again, you had Ben McAdoo first year as a head coach, and boom, they're in the playoffs. But I just look at a lot of of important positions at quarterback. At all, on the right side of the offensive line, at defensive line, at linebacker, and I just see, like, I see, and even, like, the depth in the secondary and the depth at wide receiver, 
a lot of that I just think is still lacking with this team. And you, I really need to be shocked uh, into thinking that this team is going to be a contender. It is going to be. I, I, I legit am going to raise my hand right now. And maybe this is just me as a pessimistic Giants fan. Uh, but I'm going to raise my hand and say the Browns are going to have a better season than the Giants. In, in, in my view, right now. I may eat my words. <laughs> I may eat my words come de December. That's totally fine. I, I, I have made a living on this channel making poor predictions. So I will keep going on that front. But right now, I feel like the Browns have more talent than this Giants team has and even though I think they have I think the Giants have more generational talent in like Barkley and Beckham but I don't know if they have the supporting cast around those two superstars and I guess you can throw Ingram in there because I I very much high on him I don't know if you have the core to really compete even though you have those guys Although, I, I don't know, Odo Beckham, he changes a fucking game. So, I, maybe Saquon can bring that same energy. I'm, I'm just, I'm so unsure about this team. I, I, and I would want to be like, hey, you know what? Let's just see how it goes. Let's see. Maybe I'll, I'll put my trust in it. But I have not been able to trust them for uh, quite a few seasons. Even in the 2016 season, I, I just, I've always felt... In that, in that season in particular, I always felt that something was going to come to bite the fucking Giants at some point. As good as they were playing, I knew at some point that they were going to fall apart. And they did. Um, didn't think it was going to be revolving around a boat trip, but they, I knew they were going to fall apart. So, um, that's where my biggest uh, disappointment is, I think, uh, with, with uh, the Giants as of lately. Now... You can look at 20 that I mean I'm not I'm talking as if I've been struggling for years with this team I mean they just they won the Super Bowl in 2011 I'm good for another like 20 years <laughs> like 30 40 years whatever well we can wait a while for another Super Bowl uh compared especially in the face of the Cleveland Browns I get it trust me I'm not gonna sit here and act woe is me with with especially with how the Browns fan base has been going um or how how that Browns team uh, has been for the, that fan base. Um, I, I'm i just saying that it is... I think that people are getting a little too excited about this Giants team, and I think it's going to end up coming back to bite them. And I think especially, you have to think about this too, you have that Giants offensive line right now, right? That I don't think is going to be good, except for maybe on the left side, right? But you have guys... You, you have to face some really tough defensive lines. You have to face the Jaguars week one. You have to face the Eagles twice. Like, this is not this is not going to be a cupcake walk. You do have to face the Buccaneers with Jason Pierre-Paul, who knows your fucking team. I, I mean, it's a different defensive coordinator, but they, he knows the players. Or, or it's a new offensive coordinator, I guess. Regardless, it doesn't matter. It... You have to be prepared for the fact that this is, could be a disappointing year because there are still a lot that needs to be worked on. And it, I think the, it could take only one more offseason by just do not think 2018 is going to be the year for the Giants. Just, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, do I think they're, but do I think this team and the Browns, do I think they're going to be better? Yes. I think that both teams overall top to bottom look different and have a little bit more of a positive energy over them but they still have a ton to prove and a lot of that's going to be you know we are doing a lot of you know speculating and all that right now um we have to see how it all plays out on the football field come you know two weeks from now or, yeah two or three weeks from now you know so yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes um, and I, right now, I guess the Giants will have one more chance to, to win this virtual game. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, I, I wanted to talk about, uh, the, oh, I, going back for a second, one thing that I felt like that made the Giants defense so great 
was obviously the defensive line. But I felt like they had four really good defensive linemen. Okay, and I, I'm including Olivia Vernon. I know kind of shit, I shot on him about where he was. You know, I, I think that he had an okay 2016. He didn't have a great 2017. Um, and I don't know how he's going to handle the linebacking position. He might do very well in it. I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm concerned. Uh, but with him, Pierre Paul, Harrison, and Jonathan Hankins, who was brought in for a visit with the Browns, that didn't end up, end up working out. I don't think they, they did not end up signing him. Um, with all of those guys, they made that defense awesome. We can talk all day about the secondary, and again, love Collins. And, you know, I, I loved having Rogers Cromartie there and Jenkins and all that. But that defensive line was what made that team awesome. And the minute that H Hankins left, that defensive line fell apart. And that's what that's the weird part to me. That like that like everyone was paying attention to the three superstars. But Hankins was not considered, and he didn't really have a great year with the Colts. I, I, in fact, I think he actually did he injure himself. I don't know. He had a very quiet year, but I do think that he was a big part of that Giants defense. I will swear by it today. Even though, even if the NFL and the teams they view him as not a good player right now, I I do think that at its core, that that Giants team was good with him. Um, and it sucks that he, he he ended up leaving. And it sucks that the Browns are not going to sign him. Because I do think deep down it will be an upgrade with who they have right now on defensive tackle. Just saying. They traded Danny Shelton to the pa to the Patriots. Um, which I, I get, which makes sense because he hasn't been at the level that he should have. He's not the first round, uh, the first round draft pick. Uh, he hasn't been playing at the level of a first round draft pick um, so that's you know that's, that's that was disappointing but it's kind of, but it still does not mean that they really have a deep defensive line um, on, on at least or the, the deep defensive tackle unit behind him so they need someone they need someone to fill that gap um, I try to think of what else I can discuss as well um Oh, man, I, I wanted to bring up something about Hard Knocks, I think, earlier. Um, I think one of my favorite moments thus far um, about Hard Knocks, it, 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 it ended up being everyone else's as well, but not so much the Carl Nassib, uh, or Nassib, Nassib, I think it's Nassib, the Carl Nassib, like, investment rant. I don't, whatever. <laughs> I don't care about it, that. What I did love, though, was the guy with, like, the plate of muscles just sitting there eating. That, I was like, that, you know what? If I, if I had seafood, if I, if seafood was just available to me at that facility, that would be me in that room every fucking day having a plate of muscles. Fucking, like, yes, I, l I was living for it. <laughs> like, absolutely. And then you have Kajust. The Juice, who I thought was a great character they introduced in the latest one, um, you know, you you root for a guy like that, you know, and then he's gonna end up being one of the casualties probably in, in, in on the cut down day. Um, but you feel for him, and you feel for his dad, who's overcome so many heart attacks and, and strokes, and he's the guy. His father's been struggling, but he's still there. He's still he was still at the Giants game. This past week, he was pro he's probably at tonight's game against the Bills. All that. I do want to make sure I haven't missed any news from the, either the Giants or the Lions game. I don't think there was. I think the biggest thing that came out of that those games um, for either of them was that the Browns unit didn't look great, um, which is uh, unfortunate. But, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. They... It's right now. I, I still do have confidence in the team. It's just you know I have to get through some obstacles. It's just it's just the way it's gotta go. Even though it's against the Bills team, I'm also not too high on. Um, and the pay, and the Giants for them, not even a team, but they people were really excited about Davis Webb, who I saw 
in person at the Browns did not play as well. So again, it's like it, everything changes from week to week. That's why it's so hard to do these things, you know, to do these like discussion things because it's like I don't know. It's like I I'm gonna be throwing the shit out there. I'm gonna give my opinion about it, regardless of the basis that I put it. And I, you know, I could be 100% right, or you know, it, it, or I could be 100% right one week, and then the next week it's like it all goes out the fucking window, you know. So <laughs> it's like this is it's just that's so, the nature of sports generally. It's just it just it constantly it is different. It's like constantly changing. So. Uh, but no, I don't think there anything any big news came out of that. Um, I'm looking. I'm I'm looking at the as we roll into credits now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have that there was nothing major that came out of that all, all that. So, all right. With so with that being said, that's the end of my little rant video. My start my first of fucking sixteen <laughs> rant videos about. All the different, uh, all, all the different teams. Um, I, I, a lot of this was deja vu for me, and probably a little bit more comfortable um, because I did this before. But now it's gonna get interesting because I got the Texans and Bears coming tomorrow with hopefully a special guest. You probably already know who that is, um, and we'll we'll be talking Texans and the, and the first half and Bears in the second half because that's and that, of course those are the two teams that are. Uh, the that are next in the line of uh, how shitty was your team last year? <laughs> so the, those guys are the second shittiest. Um, yeah, and, and from there, I, I I just you know I I think again to kind of sum it all up with these two teams, both have hope, both have things to look forward to, both have new regimes that have experienced people that are going to hopefully that they know how to build a good team, so hopefully they can. They, they, that that could help them kick ass in the future. Again, we just we don't know for sure right now, though. We don't know for sure how this is all gonna play out. Um, and I, I I'm just I I do I just think that both teams still has hole have holes that they have to worry about. One team has a head coach that they have to worry about, uh, and the other has a, a quarterback that they have to worry about. I think in terms of guys that might be not there in 2019 i'm gonna say that i'm sorry giants fans eli i i would not be surprised if this was his last year as much as he wants to keep on playing but again whatever uh feel free to i love engaging with people with the with this shit so please comment below uh if you disagree with me that's totally fine just don't be a dick about it that's just my number one rule um and you know I, I love talking about it. And even if you don't disagree with me, if you want to just echo one of my points and or want to just add something to the conversation that I may not have brought up, fucking do it. <laughs> like I just I, I I'm totally fine with this becoming a conversation. And if no one comments, that's totally fine too. Cause I I don't have the time. <laughs> not really the time to, to to sit and comment on everything. So that's okay too. Alright, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Be good to one another, be kind to one another, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.